The purpose of this example is to provide you with a very basic example of an impairment loss and the related calculations. Applying a suggested exam technique, we first consider the required section of the example. Firstly, they require the recoverable amount to be calculated at 31 December 20x0. Thereafter, they require you to calculate the carrying amount before the impairment loss on 31 December 20x0. Thirdly, the information then says that you need to calculate the impairment loss and prepare the general journal entry, after which they then require the carrying amount after the impairment loss. The required section will normally not be given to you in such a step-by-step -step approach. You'll normally be asked to do a statement of financial position, part of which will then be the impairment of the property, plants and equipment line item. These steps illustrate the steps found in IS 36 that you need to follow with an impairment loss. Remembering, looking for an indication, if there is one you need to test, which involves calculating the recoverable amount, comparing this then to the carrying amount before the recognition in part 2, and then calculating the impairment loss if the recoverable amount is less. Looking now at the given information. An asset has a remaining useful life of five years. This is important for your depreciation and perhaps also for the future cash flows if value and use is needed. The asset originally cost 224,000 Rand. The estimated useful life of the asset at purchase date was seven years. Depreciation is provided on the straight line basis. The impairment information now follows. According to the cash budget of the company, the asset is estimated to generate a net cash inflow of 50,000 Rand per annum before tax over the following five years. Management has approved the budget. The asset can be sold at the end of its useful life for 15,000 Rand, being the disposal amount. An appropriate discount rate after tax for this type of asset is 14%. It's important to consider if that rate is given to you as before or after tax. They then provide you with a tax rate of 30%. At present, there's an active market for the asset and the asset can be sold at a market price of 170,000 Rand with selling expenses related to this of 15,000 Rand. The information that you'll become familiar with to search for in the given information to use in your solution. Firstly, you have your cash flow information, which is a series of annual payments. In this case, given to you as a net cash inflow. It may be given as specific in and outflows, and it will be up to you to calculate the net amount. The discount rate is also given, and there again, it's important to remember we are working with before tax amounts. The cash flows are before tax, the discount rate, however, is an after-tax amount. They do, however, give you the tax rate to work this backwards to a before-tax amount. The fair value less cost to sell information is then given towards the end of this information. Considering now the suggested solution. Remember to get into the good habit of looking for indications of impairment. Although not provided in this example, as it is rather simplistic, it is a good habit to be in. Assuming now you have indications of impairment, you now need to go and test for impairment. This involves calculating a recoverable amount and comparing it to the carrying amount of the asset in the books before any impairment loss. The recoverable amount now rep is represented by the higher of the value in the use, or fair value less cost to sell. You'll need to calculate both to be able to determine which is higher. Once you have the higher one, that represents your recoverable amount to compare to your carrying amount. Looking firstly at your value in use. This involves using your calculator, entering firstly your net cash flows, the inflows of 50,000 Rand as the payment for the five years. You then need to enter your appropriate discount rate as well as the amount for the disposal that represents your future value. These are then discounted back to a present value. Considering briefly the interest rate, remember you require before tax cash flows and a before tax interest rate. The cash flow was given to you as 50,000 before tax. 
The interest rate, however, was given to you as 14% after tax. It's a relatively simple mathematical calculation. Your 14% represents the after tax amount, tax being 30%, so after tax representing 70%. 14% equates thus to 70%. You want to then know what 100% is equal to. So your 14 divided by what you know, which is the 70%, times by the 100% will then give you your 20% pre-tax interest rate. You now know what your value in use is. Your next step is to calculate the fair value less cost to sell. This is usually the simpler of the calculations. Fair value is given to you at 170 with the direct costs related to the disposal of this asset at 15,000, giving your fair value less cost to sell as 155,000. Comparing these two amounts, you can now see that the value in use is the higher of these two and will represent your recoverable amount going forward. Once you have your recoverable amount, you need to calculate the carrying amount that's in your accounting records to compare this with. In this case, it's a fairly simple calculation. Your calculation is thus the cost divided by the total useful life times the two years that has elapsed to the end of the current reporting period, remembering that impairment is tested for at the end of that period. Now that you have your carrying amount of the 160000 and you also know that your recoverable amount is 155559 you can calculate your impairment loss. The journal entry to record this loss is a debit to the profit and loss section in the statement of profit and loss and other comprehensive income and a credit to accumulated depreciation. The carrying amount at the end of the reporting period after the impairment loss will therefore be in the 160,000 we calculated above after depreciation and then after the impairment loss, giving you your new carrying amount, which is equal to your recoverable amount at the end of the reporting period.